So I wrote a script to extract information from over 2,000 different cloud job descriptions. That's across all of different roles like cloud engineer, site reliability engineer, data engineer, solutions architect, you name it, I've pulled in data from those different areas. And the reason I did that is so that I can inform you with the best possible information that I can about what the different skills and areas that you should focus on depending on the different type of role that you want to get in the cloud industry. Now I know from speaking to so many different people that it is really complicated to understand which areas you should focus on, which skills you should focus on, should you build a specialty in X or Y, and which role is right for you. Now I'm hoping to answer as many of those questions as I can in this video, but I'm definitely going to put up different videos in future where we potentially deep dive into some of the specific roles and start to expand on those as well. Okay, so let me run through the exact information of the data that we pulled out here so that you have that for reference. Now, the information says 2,187 job descriptions pulled entirely. Of that, 592 of those were DevOps engineers, 306 of those were platform engineers, and 264 of those were cloud engineers. The rest of the roles were then filled by things like solutions architect, data engineer, software engineer, engineering manager, and some other titles where I couldn't find as much information or job descriptions about those titles. So predominantly DevOps and cloud engineer and platform engineer, but also we got some information about those other roles as well, and we can do some comparison later in the video. Okay, so let's go straight in with the headline skills that came out from this analysis. So what were the top five skills that were asked across all of those different cloud, different job descriptions? What were employers asking for? Number one, top skill that came up was unsurprisingly AWS with 68% of the job descriptions asking for Amazon Web Services. Underneath that was Kubernetes with 49% of job descriptions asking for it, Terraform with 48%, Azure with 47%, and then Python, 42% of jobs asking for the programming language Python. Now, this doesn't surprise me, and I'm actually really glad to see here that this information correlates with the last analysis that I did, where I performed this analysis but manually across 100 different cloud engineer jobs. Now, the data here is almost exactly the same, very similar numbers, so that's great to see, which means the automation itself is working as expected. And also, there was a survey done by A Cloud Guru looking into the different topics that people were searching on their platform, and that was also very similar to some of these skills that came out in this analysis. So I'm quite confident that the data is good and that you can rely on it when it comes to building your own learning path. So for those skills, I actually ignored what I would say were also practices as well. So the sort of concepts or ideas rather than the actual direct hard skills. So which ones of those are mentioned in the top numbers? So I've got three of those for you. The first one was DevOps, which was mentioned in 59% of those job descriptions. Now, of course, take that with a little bit of a pinch of salt because of course, the majority of job descriptions analyzed were the DevOps title itself. Second was CICD, which came in with 53% of job descriptions and Agile was mentioned in 33%. Now again, like Agile maybe is referring also to companies that are operating within an Agile sort of framework rather than directly a skill that you need to have. However, that does give you an indication that probably you should have a look into that and know some of the jargon or some of the specifics around Agile development before you go into an interview. Now, before we move on, I did want to mention that I've also done a video talking about the different books that you can learn in order to get into the cloud industry. And I actually think when it comes to practices that books are probably one of the best places that you can go to if you don't have existing experience in industry, it's probably something that's gonna give you the best insight into how these companies operate. And I think it's gonna give you an advantage in an interview. And I think it's something that a lot of people ignore. So whilst I've done the other video talking about this, I'll just quickly mention a couple of books here that might help you. So when it comes to agile development, this book about Scrum, now Scrum isn't exactly the same as agile, but it's a kind of framework that a lot of companies operate under and they use a lot of these ideas. So if you want to wrap your head around agile development, I can really recommend that book. It's called Scrum, the art of doing twice the work in half the time by Jeff Sutherland. Another one that I could recommend to you is the DevOps Handbook. This is sort of the companion to some other books as well, the Phoenix Project and the Unicorn Project was released recently. But the DevOps Handbook is something that I prefer a little bit more. It's more like a reference guide. The other ones are more like novels, but it depends what you're into. However, that could be a good overview of different DevOps practices. If you're trying to wrap your head and understand what this whole DevOps things mean and why do people keep mentioning it? Why is it mentioned in 50% of our job descriptions? That book will give you a good introduction to that as well. 
Another one that I want to recommend to you is the original Site Reliability Engineering book. This was actually written by the folks over at Google and they kind of coined the term Site Reliability Engineering. Now, a lot of the practices in here you might not necessarily need in companies that you work for, but it is sort of the quintessential original about how site reliability came about. And if you're looking to get into that role itself, I really recommend that you go and read the book because it's gonna give you that historical context about how the role came about itself and what kind of companies are trying to get when they're looking for site reliability engineers. And the last one that I want to recommend to you is this one, which is Building Microservices by Sam Newman. Now, this book is one of my favorites. It talks about the microservice architectural pattern, which is a lot of uh, overlap with the different cloud services. When you're building sort of microservices, if you're building with serverless or even Kubernetes, you're probably gonna be building in sort of a microservice type architecture. And this book goes into lots of practices around that. So if you're trying to wrap your head around sort of Agile, DevOps, and CICD, as these are the top practices that are recommended, those are just some books that I think that you should probably look into and it's gonna help you sort of understand what those practices mean and how to put them into play when you're working for these different companies. Now, when I last did this analysis, I actually just looked at Cloud Engineer. And I was really curious to understand how the different roles that overlap and what the differences would be. Now, of course, I probably imagine that you are too. One of the things that I've mentioned time and time again on the YouTube channel itself or on different social media is that you should really focus your learning efforts towards a role specifically. So when I give you this sort of aggregate information about all the different skills that you could learn, I don't think it's super useful and I don't necessarily think that you should use that entirely as your guide about which skills that you should look into. So what I did is I had a look through and also started to see if there are any differences between some of the roles. Like, is there a role where there is a specific skill that's quite different to the main skills that came up on the aggregate popular skills list? Okay, so let's start off with DevOps Engineer. So CICD for DevOps Engineer actually goes up. So across all of the different roles, CICD was asked for 53% of time. However, for DevOps Engineer, it actually goes up to 75% of the time. And also for Terraform, that went up from 48% across the board to 68% for DevOps Engineer. Now, that doesn't surprise me too much because the DevOps Engineer role is very much about automation. And both of those skills, whether that be continuous integration and continuous deployment, or Terraform are ways that you can start to automate different aspects within the cloud. And that is very much aligned with a lot of companies think of the DevOps role itself is automating, speeding up processes, working on things like deployment and testing pipelines. Okay, so within the role of security engineer, it was quite interesting to see that generally the mentioning of networking terms, sort of like DNS, IP addresses, and things like that, went up from 38% across all of the roles to 59% for security engineer. Now, I think that's mostly because security people are, need to have a good understanding of the fundamentals of cloud computing, which includes networking as well. So you need to know how the internet is made, how packets are transferred between different areas so that you can understand different exploitations that might happen at those different areas. And it's a little bit lower level. So that's interesting to see that security engineer is a little bit more biased towards what I would say are more sort of fundamental skills, a little bit lower in the OSI layer. For platform engineer, the skill for Kubernetes actually went up from 49% across all roles to 77% for the platform role title itself. Now, again, that doesn't surprise me too much because Kubernetes itself kind of lends itself to building out an internal platform. So it's not surprising that a lot of platform engineering titles are asking for Kubernetes. So that's something to think about if that's the title that you want, then you might want to bias your learning a little bit more towards Kubernetes and container-based technology. Okay, so what about the humble software engineer? So in order to get the actual right data here, what I did is once I extracted all the software engineers, I actually removed any that didn't mention AWS, Azure, or GCP. So that way we got actual software developers that will be working directly with cloud services. Now of those software developers, what I saw was DevOps went from 59% across the board to 71% and containers went from 45% to 61%. Now again, doesn't surprise me too much. It's, you know, things like containers are typically the way that software is packaged and deployed. So it's unsurprising that containers are a big technology for software developers themselves, and they need to understand how to package an application in a container so that it can then be shipped to production. It doesn't necessarily mean that they will control the orchestration, like using something like Kubernetes, but definitely a lot of companies will be containerizing their applications. So knowing the sort of Docker and how containerization works is definitely a key skill for a software engineer. Okay, so some last things to note actually is also for the data engineer title. Now this is the most profound difference from the rest of the key skills across the cloud. So what I saw is Python, which was seen in 42% of job descriptions, goes up to 79% of jobs in data engineering and cloud. And another one is SQL goes up from 20% to 73% 
for these different job descriptions. Now, this is totally unsurprising because a data engineer works very much with data. Python is incredibly popular as a language within the data community with other languages behind that like R and also for SQL is a query language for querying data out of databases. So unsurprising to see that really shoot up in the rankings when it comes to data engineering specifically. Now, what that tells me again is it's why it's very important that you should tailor your approach to the different jobs. So as you can see more generally is that these different roles will differ in terms of the different skills. You know, so we see in DevOps engineers biased towards automation, data engineers biased towards some of the data technologies like Python and SQL. And that's all the more reason that you need to do your research before you pick one of these titles and that you focus on the skills that are most important for that job role rather than just learning all of the different skills that you could possibly learn in the cloud industry. Now, one of the common questions that I get asked is which of the different cloud providers should I learn? Now, so I've got the data here on aggregate, what are the percentages for the different cloud providers? That's AWS, GCP, and Azure. So AWS comes in top with 68% of job descriptions asking for Amazon Web Services, Azure in second place with 52% of jobs, and GCP in last place with 21% of jobs asking for that. So those give you a rough indication of the sort of allocations for the different cloud providers. I'm often recommending that folks learn AWS if they don't have a preference towards one of the cloud providers. However, that's just because of the size of the market share that they have. Now those numbers in terms of job descriptions, again, mirror pretty much exactly what the market share is for those cloud providers. So that's not surprising at all. Okay, so looking at the cloud provider data, I started asking myself, so how many of these companies are actually asking for potentially all of the different cloud providers or two of them? And if they're asking for two of the cloud providers, which ones are they pairing together? So I've got that information as well. So the number of companies that actually asked for two cloud providers together was 32%. So 32% of companies asking for a combination of Azure, AWS, and GCP together. Now, if we start to group those together so we see which ones are grouped more likely, what we saw is Azure and AWS were mentioned together in 25%, GCP and AWS in 15%, and Azure and GCP in 10%. Like below that was actually asking for all three cloud providers was 9%. So what you can see there is generally speaking, if you're going to learn two cloud providers, it's probably better if you focus on AWS and then combine that with either Azure or GCP. Obviously in last place, the combination of Azure and GCP, that's probably just mainly because again, market share. So that's quite likely that that comes in at last place. If you're getting any value out of what I'm doing for Open Up the Cloud, I would love if you would be able to like this video. That just means that more people are going to be able to see it and YouTube will push this video in the algorithm to more people. Okay, so what this data really shows us is areas that you should really focus on regardless of the different role you're going for and areas that are really sort of supplementary, generally speaking, for the different roles. Now, those main areas are infrastructure as code, there are cloud provider knowledge, containers, networking, programming language of some sort, and sort of bash and Linux knowledge. So those are the sort of core skills that you probably should need depending on the different role that you're going into. And then beyond that, there are different sort of supplementary skills that you can look at, things like databases and SQL, messaging systems like Kafka, APIs, REST, GraphQL, or alternative infrastructure as code tools like Salt, Ansible, and Chef, and then monitoring tools like Grafana or CloudWatch. Those things come up much less than the other ones, so I would say that you should focus on those initial areas before then adding in these additional skills, and then you can use those as sort of supplementary to those other core skills. Okay, that's all I wanted to go through in this video. I will do follow-up videos where we do deeper dives into those specific areas. So make sure to subscribe and then you'll catch those videos where we dive into, let's say, specific titles within the cloud industry. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna open source the repo with the code about how I ingested this sort of data and then you can take that and use it if you want to. And what I'm gonna do is also work on hosting some of this information in a report format, create some infographics and things like that. So watch out for those on social media. I'm hoping that that helps sort of digest some of this information. And if you want access to the direct or raw data, or if you have a specific question, more than happy to run that against the database just to figure out if you're wondering about what skills for a certain role or whether a skill comes up across the different roles be sure to send that over to me on social media or DM me on some different platform and I'll be sure to provide that information for you as well. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.